What can I tell you about the Ak Arius? It's one of those weapons that not a whole lot of Tenno use. Is it a bad weapon? No. Is it a meta weapon? No. But maybe the Prime can change that. Hey guys, welcome back. As always, my name is Lazar, and today we're going to be diving deeper into the Ak Arius Prime. As per the usual, I'll have two setups ready for you. An introductory level setup geared towards more newer Tenno, but fear not, my veteran friends, we also have an end game setup geared towards veteran, steel path, all of that good stuff. We're gonna take the weapon, put it through its paces. That said though, please bear in mind that my building guides usually take a more new player friendly tone, simply because I want anybody watching to understand how the weapon functions and how it should be built. So in case you're a veteran and you already know most of this stuff, please bear with me. And with that out of the way, let's jump into the Ak Arius Prime. Let's begin by checking out how the weapon handles without any mods equipped. And for that, just a couple of our regular free shots. The Ak Arius Prime is a explosive secondary weapon because this one fires explosive projectiles, mini missiles that actually track your enemy. Now granted the tracking isn't all that fantastic, if you move too far away from your targets it will no longer lock on, but if you keep within a reasonable distance it automatically locks on to the torso of the enemy, not the head. Which is a good thing because the explosions do not have a headshot multiplier. There are two sources of potentially applying damage to your targets. One, the projectile physically making contact with a target, and two, the explosion. But the explosion doesn't have a headshot multiplier, and even worse than that, it cannot trigger headshot effects such as Arcane Pistolero or Arcane Deadhead. As for the damage in the explosion itself, it's actually quite good. While the magazine size is not fantastic at 8 and the ammo reserve is also not fantastic on this one, you're getting a big 7.8 meter explosion. That's pretty much it for usability, now we're gonna be jumping into a stat comparison between the Act Arius Prime and the regular Act Arius. It does have one special trait however, the special trait of this one is faster reload while you sprint. I'm talking about 50% reload speed. And if it's wielded by Gauss, this being Gauss's signature weapon, you're getting double that. But about that comparison to the regular Act Arius. First of all, accuracy has remained the same, ammo maximum has been increased from 20 to 24, you are getting better ammo pickup as well, 6 instead of 5, but less fire rate and less magazine. Fire rate has gone down from 4.33 to 3.67 and magazine has been decreased by 20% from 10 to 8. However, the reload has also received a massive buff. We're talking about 2.4 seconds instead of 3.4, so the reload speed is significantly faster. Overall, you're going to be getting roughly about the same uptime, slightly better. Let's talk critical chance, critical damage, and all of that good stuff. Critical chance has been increased by a whopping 300%, but the base was only 6, so you're looking at 18% crit chance, which means critical mods are now worth it on the Act Arius Prime. Critical multiplier also saw a buff from 1.8 to 2x. As for the status chance, this one saw an increase as well from 28% to 34%. The damage, however, has been left the same. I'm talking about the impact damage, the projectile making contact with a target, still at 68. However, the blast damage, the big explosion, has been increased by about 20%. And again, you're getting that range increase of 0.6 as well. Unfortunately, the falloff also remained the same at 17%, and that is definitely a brutal falloff when it comes to damage. In the case of the Ak Arius, however, that one is mitigated somewhat because you do have homing projectiles, so you should be getting most of your damage on the right target except for when the lock-on system decides it wants to lock on to something that you don't want to hit. So, there's that to bear in mind. As soon as you build your Ak Arius Prime, you get your mod capacity to 30 out of 30. You jump into actions, you plug in the Orkin Catalyst, you double that mod capacity if you want to get the most you can out of the weapon. If you bought the Ak Arius Prime for Prime Access, it should have a Orkin Catalyst already installed, so you don't need to worry about that. The better question is, is this weapon worth upgrading? If you're more of a new player and you bumped into the Ak Arius Prime, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it, simply because the mastery lockout is 14, and in order to farm this one, you're looking at two battles and two receivers, and the receivers are actually rare parts from relics. So you know what? Maybe not. Have a look at the Atomos, that's a much more suitable new player weapon, and it packs one hell of a punch. Not only that, it also has an incarnate version to boot, so you can basically take it from MR4, 5, MR5, all the way to basically the Warframe's endgame. Yes, I'm talking about Fashion Frame. If you want to see a full and detailed guide, link the cards right now. As for the Akarius, 4 Forma is what you're looking at to get a decent build out of it, an endgame setup. However, for a more introductory level setup, 2 Forma will be enough. By default, the Akarius comes with 2 Dash Polarities and a V Polarity. 
Now, let's have a look at a standard introductory level build. Damage with Hornet Strike, multi shot with Battle Diffusion, as well as Lethal Taurine, critical chance and critical damage for the use of creeping up the bullseye, 200% crit, minus 20% fire rate, and target cracker will offer you only 60% critical damage. You gotta get yourself the Prime version for this one and a whole lot of secondary builds because you're looking at 110%, significantly more. You do have one option, however. This one is called Sharpen Bullet, 75% critical damage, which is more than 60, yay, but it's while aiming and after getting a kill. Still, it's better, in my opinion, you go for Sharpen Bullet. If you're just starting out in Warframe right now, keep it to Target Cracker because it makes for a more streamlined experience. As for Accelerated Isotope, this is more of a newer mod that was introduced in Warframe with Whispers in the Wall. 60% radiation, 40% fire rate, so in total we're getting 100% fire rate out of our weapon thanks to Lethal Tor and 60% Accelerated Isotope, 40%. The radiation is the big deal here, because essentially you are getting an elemental combo within the same mod, which is absolutely huge. We're also going to be making corrosive on the weapon with the 290 mods, pathogen rounds and convulsion. We're going for the 90s over the 60s because we're not looking to get a thousand procs out of the weapon. What we're looking for is one big bada boom damage. About Creeping Bullseye, if you don't have this one just yet, you can go for Pistol Gambit. 120% instead of 200 is not fantastic. This is a corrupted mod. And throughout your Warframe journey, you will need a lot of these corrupted mods for your quote-unquote meta weapon builds, Warframe builds, etc. And if you don't know how to farm corrupted mods, as always, I got your back. Click the cards right now. Now we'll conduct the test using Wisp. Wisp will have no build whatsoever, so gotta make sure it doesn't skew our test results with not on Void School, which again doesn't affect weapon damage in this case. What we're gonna be spawning is Corrupted Heavy Goons level 100. In my opinion, for an MR14-ish, this should be a pretty relevant test without the Steel Path modifiers enabled. Now let's see what the Ack Arius can do versus these rather tough targets. Fire wherever you will, essentially, since you're not really going for the headshot. And it doesn't really matter if you're going for the headshot, because the weapon will automatically aim to the torso anyway, just fire in their general direction. And after a couple of rounds, it's gonna be deleting even these level 100 corrupted heavy goons. So the weapon does pack a punch. The problem with the weapon lies in its usability. Because if I wasn't invulnerable right now, I would be getting knocked back all over the place. So you should be using it with a frame which is immune to knockback. Something like a Revenant, something like a Gauss, because it is his signature weapon. Or maybe even something like a Rhino, because those knockbacks can get extremely annoying. And again, the default range on that explosion is 7.8 meters. It is rather large and you can further increase that by using fulmination on the weapon fulmination is another option you can replace something like accelerated isotope and simply make instead of corrosive and radiation you can just make corrosive on the weapon corrosive and radiation however will help you against the murmur faction which is the latest faction to be added to warframe if you need more details on that in the cards right now this concludes the new player portion of the guide what follows next is for more end game players we're looking at a build something like this. We got Galvanized Diffusion, we got Prime Fulmination, Target Cracker, we got the same Lethal Torrent, Creeping Bulls, Accelerated Isotope, but we also got Prime Convulsion instead of the normal one and the regular Pathogen Rounds. We also got in the Excel Assault Lethal Momentum. Lethal Momentum simply helps with the travel speed of the projectiles, however, it also impairs the targeting system a little bit because you only got a 15 degree angle at which they can turn, if that makes any sense. So Lethal Torrent may cause the targeting system to glitch out a little bit. As for Arcane, we're going to be using Cascadia Flare. This is fantastic because it offers you 480% flat damage. That's a whole lot of flat damage, but how exactly are you going to proc it? You don't have any heat on your gun. Ah, I'm glad you asked that. For that, we're going to be using the best primer in the game. This one is called the Diriga. You should be using a build such as this as a jumping off point for the Diriga, but more importantly, you got to use yourself the Hellstrom with such a build. This basically would get me my heat procs and battle procs on the target. It's your basic primer build, and by this point you should already get the Diriga. If you want more details on that, link the cards right now for a full and detailed guide on the companion changes. We're also going to be grabbing Revenant and Arcane Avenger. This is 45% extra critical chance bonus additive after simply stacking on top of what you already have, applying to your primary, secondary, melee and your heavy weapon at the exact same time. Here's the thing, the Acarius needs it, because even with critical deceleration on it, or was it Creeping Bullseye? Creeping Bullseye on this one, it goes to 54% crit chance. 54 with 45, we're looking at 99%. So yes, Arcane Avenger on this one is definitely a smart idea. We're gonna be spawning a mixture of targets, Rokal Irvin and the Hollowed Vein representing the brand new faction, the Murmur. This is why we're building Corrosive and Radiation. Corrosive for the Necromex and Radiation for the actual Murmurs. 
We also got Corrupted Heavy Goons, our fan favorite. We're gonna be unpausing the target so they can hit me. We're gonna go to Steel Path Modifiers, level 180. And I'm also gonna be turning off Invincibility just so you can see exactly how everything rolls out before the game forces me to restart. So let's get to it. The Rogue Lurvin normally aren't really much of a threat. If you take a look at my buffs in the upper right portion of the screen, you will see that I'm already at 240% extra damage thanks to my little Sentinel and it proccing heat on my target. Cascadia Flare is significantly better. Yeah, it's just, it's just how it is. And I'm not getting knocked back thanks to Mesmer Skin. Arcane Avenger is also up thanks to Combat Discipline. And this is how you play, essentially. However, my friends, once again, just like the Xeltra, I am bone dry on ammo. So, there is that to bear in mind. But let's see how this one goes in an actual mission, shall we? Welcome to Deimos, my friends. This is Munio Mirror Defense, and I'm gonna show everything from the start so you know exactly how ammo goes, so you know exactly how I can handle this mission with a Warframe that's not gonna be doing any, any area of effect at all. I'm just gonna be using the gun and using Revenant's ability simply to survive. So, Mesmer skin only, no frawls, no one free, no nothing like that. Look at all the beautiful explosion, yes? Explosion is good. And of course, explosion will basically annihilate everything that stands in front of you. This is base level steel path. I'm talking level 150 something steel path. And you can keep the weapon with you up until level 400, 500 steel path without any issue whatsoever. Past that point, I would look towards other options. But the point is what the weapon can do. So, well, and purposes. This is essentially what it can do. Eyes on my ammo, everybody, yes? I'm doing the exact same test I did with the Exceltra to prove a point. Essentially, if you're gonna be playing some mob-intensive missions, survival, mirror defense, or whatever else that is a bit more heavy on the mobs, and you're consistently killing your targets, you should be theoretically good on the ammo. If this is an issue for you, in the Exodus slot, you can renounce getting that projectile flight speed and go for some ammo mutation as well, pistol ammo mutation. I'm pretty sure you don't need a Prime variant, but if you're having ammo issues, if you're overdoing it with fire rate, then you might want to consider that as an option. For the time being, my ammo reserve, while it's not fantastic at only 24, still it gets topped off without much problem. As for the level of the enemies, well, it's not an issue right now. The explosion go boom and the explosion kill targets is as simple as that. Mania's here. That's one magazine. That's the second magazine. And the third and final one. Or not. Needs more! There you go. We got Acolyte on the way. We're gonna shoot the general vicinity. Or his shields are gone and then went invulnerable. It's violence. Death from above from violence. And that one took two magazines. And that's pretty much gonna do it. What can I tell you about the Acarius? It's a good secondary weapon. It's not a bad secondary weapon by any stretch of the imagination. The problem is the Tenno, as in us. We've been spoiled by incarnate weapons, which are on a completely different level. So here's the thing. If you're nice, if you're nice, if you want a cool, quirky, nice, blow up secondary weapon, the Acarius can definitely provide. But is this one of the best weapons in the game? No, far from it. If you're that kind of player and you simply want one of the most powerful secondary there is, then you gotta look at the Latham, at the Lex, at the Incarnate World Toxicist even, and not only. Link the cards right now for a full and detailed guide on that. For the time being, the Acarius Prime is a significant upgrade over the regular, and I do recommend it if fun is more important than meta to you. As always, my name has been Laser. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like, share, share, and subscribe only if you enjoy the content. If you got any feedback for me, I would love to read it in the comment section down below. You can also catch me on Twitch, Facebook, Twitter, all the usual places. And on Texar, where I do the exact same things that I do here, only for tech things. Follow on Texar. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.